Hey, so every two months here in sunny Norwich, we have a, a real estate trader gathering. We call it the cuddle, because everyone needs a look, little cuddle. Um, and the general format is that we get here for about sort of 12, half 12. We then content throughout the day, we then have food, and then fun and games. So to, normally we're, we're going to be doing it at the Norwich Man Cave, which has loads of like fun stuff, but we're going to some VR arcade later. And then the bar crawl. So, um, we've got like a couple of minutes, so let's do this. Hey, hey, hey! Thanks for coming, folks. I'm getting a lot of stick online going, oh, you missed out on 50% of the market you know, of this, this rally so far. Um, so I've, I've mentioned this a few times. So one, you shouldn't try and catch every single up and down in the market. Um, my crude analogy is like when you're young and you go clubbing, you're looking to pull and there's a hundred girls in the nightclub and then all of a sudden five of them walk out and then you crying in the corner because you didn't get to talk or kiss five of those girls, but there's still 95 left. So you shouldn't try and get every single opportunity. You will drive yourself crazy. Um, also, the risk to reward um, uh, at, at the time. So obviously everyone can look at you know, these lows and go, oh, look, from here to here is 50% growth so far. Yes, but what, like, if you just go back in time, when crypto is around here, when you uh, uh, looked at the risk to reward of it all, it wasn't obvious. In fact, like, well, nothing's changed. It's still very bearish, and there was, and it was very likely, or there was a high probability of this bunching to, to con continue down. So one thing I did get wrong was that I thought we'd have a little bit of a move down, sort of um, December time, and and we didn't. Instead, it did this, but didn't matter because we were sat in cash, and we've been, yeah, we're going to stay in cash for as much as we can. So where is safe to sidestep? Well, again, in my opinion, and this changes. Like there was a point last year where I said. BUSD is probably the safest because everyone is being forced to basically play with Binance, CZ is a beast, all that sort of stuff. But you could have said the same thing about SBF and FTX. Um, so like any investor, you should pivot your ideas based on new data. So I'm no longer that keen on BUSD for all the reasons I've just said and that is unbacked basically all of the last year and there's so much FUD going around. Not all FUD is true, but some FUD is. So obviously don't have it all in one basket. So the, our assets are spread across different stables at the moment. Um, so I just don't want to be in a position where you're completely wiped out. So I don't want it all in BUSD in case that gets done and then I'm, I am done for good. I don't want that. You should always, be, you should never put yourself in a position where you, you could be done for good. You're, you need to be able to fight the war and fight in a, another day if all goes wrong. Yeah, so perhaps have a mix of stables. Um, you could even try out some of the, the lower market cap stables like DAI, TrueUSD. Um, I had a look at Gemini USD and that seems quite good. They do, um, in fact, of all of the, the, the stables I looked at, Gemini was probably the most transparent. So they're the Winklevi brothers. Um, I think they're a force of good in the crypto world, to be fair. They get a lot of crap, um, but I, so far, but the market cap is so small. So if you do have stuff in GUSD, uh, don't put your whole lot in there, have a little bit. Um, cash on Kraken, so convert your USDT into, you know, GBP or Euros. Um, slightly safer in my opinion it's looked after it goes into a different pot basically on kraken we had a trading pub about that i mean you could do that but for the long term as those that just want to sit and hold for the next 10 years yeah you could just go get in bitcoin now but again that's not for me so many business ideas so many business ideas but the key thing here is you have to get past the first order thinking so when you're, when you're use, seeing all these tools, it's really easy to think, oh yeah, I could set up a translation business or I could set up a copywriting business. You know, copywriters are screwed. Like, that's probably the, the first business and one of my best mates is a copywriter. Her whole family depends on her copywriting business. And I was like, you've got to sort your business out now because you either need to give out more content, more stuff, better, a lot faster, or somehow pivot because um, it's not just fancy and arty farty copy you can tell it create a sales converting sh um, article for blah and she was quite resistant and she, I was like okay 
how long does it take you to um, write an article for a client? And she said, well, it depends, you know, I, I tend um, <clears throat> I tend to spend a day researching the topic, then spend half a day writing a bunch of articles about that topic. Um, and it's quite time intensive. And I was like, okay, like, give me an example of your next article. She's like, well, I've just got um, a roofing company and I have to write a whole bunch of articles about flat roof tiling. The pros and cons of flat roof tiling. And she was like, yeah, I've, I've, it'll probably take me a day. And I was like, okay, hold on. Write me an article on the pros and cons of flat roof tiling uh, and I was like, how many words? 1,500. Make it 1,500 words long. Enter. And she was like, oh, shit. So, yeah. These are the districts that they're planning to chop it up into. Um, so apparently you can reach everywhere, or everywhere that you, every, everything you need within a 15-minute bike ride. But here's the crazy bit. And, I, and this is nothing to do with climate change. The more you look into it, it's all about systematic control of the populace. So I'll read out bits of this, which I think are important. Yeah. These plans have been proposed to in intention of reducing traffic, fighting climate change, and promoting more sustainable travel. Sure. Um, tra so they add traffic filters. So in all of these things, what they have to do to enforce this is increase, on average, um, CCTV by 600 times, not percent, times um, and they have to put traffic filters everywhere i.e blockades basically so traffic filters mean that private cars cannot go through certain locations without a permit which would have to be applied for by residents or those that live locally they would generally operate 7 a.m to 7 p.m seven days a week the fine for cars that go through despite not being exempt would be 70 pounds Cars would be monitored by automatic number plate recognition. The aim is to reduce travel levels across the city, allowing for better bus system and more incentives to, work, uh, to walk or cycle, as well as helping tackle air pollution. If approved, there would, be, there would then be a six month trial in the summer of 2023. That was alarming. You then dig deeper. People can drive freely around their own neighborhood, i.e. district that they're forced in, and can apply, keyword there, apply for a permit to drive through the filters into other neighborhoods for up to 100 days a year. That's basically twice a week. This equates to an av oh yeah, sorry, uh, av average of two days per week. Oh shit. The alternative is to drive out onto the ring road and then back into the destination. A maximum of three permits a household will be allowed where there are several adults with cars registered to the address. That is a massive infringement on your own sovereign freedoms. Like, I know some of you think I'm a, a kook that just hates the WEF, regardless of what it says. It's not, there's a lot of stuff that I actually like that the World Economic Forum says. Just the stuff I don't like is freaking scary. Because if they allow this in Oxford, no matter how well they say it, like no matter how much people hate it, whatever, it will most likely be proclaimed a success. And then it's just a slippery slope until fast forward 10, 15 years, every major city is a 15 minute city. Cool, so it's been a long day. Um, the AI chat seemed to go down quite well. I'm always surprised how many people are not aware of chat GPT and mid journey and all those sorts of stuff. But yeah, as I keep saying, that like we don't need to be scared of AI. AI is not going to be taking your jobs. It's humans armed with AI tools that will be taking jobs and business from, from humans that don't use it. Oh, oh hey, kid. Yeah, um, we're here at some VR place. I can't be asked to do VR tonight, but we will be drinking and we're going bar crawl later. So.